Hello and welcome. I was asked by the GL community to just give you a short explanation on how a Gift of Legacy board functions and how you are placed, as well as share some insights on the algorithm so you can understand the value of a personal invitee and this will allow you to plan strategically so you can enjoy the benefits that comes with this gifting activity and community. On your screen, you will see an image labeled Board Placement Rules it's just to give you a bit of a visual representation so you can follow along with me as I explain the boards. Now, every board and every participant has to follow a set of rules. These rules are in the code and they cannot be manipulated by any participant. The board we have here is a silver board, which basically means nothing in terms of the explanation as all boards function the same way. What you see on this board is of course the legend position in the middle, followed by guide 1 and 2 to the left and right, then builders 1 and 2 to the left, builders 3 and 4 to the right, and finally 8 gifters on the outside. Notice that the gifters are numbered 1 to 4 from the top to the bottom on the left, but 5 to 8 from the bottom to the top on the right. And this already shows you the natural flow of the board. It shows you how the board would like to populate. So let's talk through the rules on the left of this image and see what changes the flow of the gift placement from one to eight. We'll start with rule number one. Invitee will always land as close as possible to the inviter. So basically what this means is if there's a position on this board and an invitee follows that position, which will be the inviter, it will try and land as close as possible to that uh, inviter. So as an example, if you take position B1, the first invitee that follows B1 as an inviter, it will go to position number one. The first, uh, second person to follow B1 as an inviter will go to position number two. If you take G2, the guide position, that guide position has the following of five, six, seven, and eight under that guide position. So it will start to populate from five, then six, then seven, then eight. If, for example, position B4 had its first invitee follow, and it filled then, obviously, position number seven. Now let's say G2 is inviting. It will then fill five, six, skip seven, because there's already someone on there, and then go to eight. So that's basically what, what it means to land as close as possible to your inviter. The second rule, when direct position under inviter is full, it will look for the next available spot on the entire board. What this means is, Let's say position B3 invites to position number five. The next one following will be to position number six. Now under position B3, there is no space to put a gifter. So the gifter will then go to the next available spot on the entire board, which means it will start to, uh, start to populate from position one, then two, three, four, etc. Rule number three. The next available position moves from position 1 to position 8, depending on availability. So, wherever there's a spot then available on the entire board, it will flow from 1 to 8. And it will skip where gifters are available, because obviously those positions aren't available. Rule number 4, when the entire board is full with no available gifter positions, it will move to the oldest board in Gift of Legacy. So, this means that your inviter is on a board, the algorithm and the code is checking to see where's your inviter because you need to be placed on a board. It finds the inviter. The inviter, for example, is the legend on this board, but positions one to eight, all the gifter positions are full. There is no space for you to go. It will then take you to the oldest board in Gift of Legacy. Now, a board does not simply become the newest board. A board is not the newest board when there's activity on a board. It still stays the oldest board until it gets destroyed. And every time a board gets destroyed, two new boards are created, which comes from the two guides that was on that board. And those two boards will then be the newest boards in Gift of Legacy. And this runs separately for basically all the levels uh, of, you know, between bronze and silver, gold and platinum. There's an oldest platinum board. There's an oldest gold board. There's an oldest bronze board and the system and the code will look for the oldest board it will then fully populate that board with uh, gifters that 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 goes there because of the perpetual system and flip that board creating in effect the two newest boards rule number five 
When possible, invitee will snap back to inviter's lineage if rule 4 is applied. So, the next board that you join or after you flipped, you joined another board, your invitee maybe went somewhere else, they will find you. They will find you in Gift of Legacy, they will find you on your next board, and they will snap back to your lineage, and they will rejoin you. Now, we can't say on what position they will join, but the position will be by following these rules. So, exactly the rules that are applied uh, here will always be applied. Now, this is where a lot of confusion comes in and where a lot of people think that my invitees are going to disappear and when I go perpetual, what happens then is, uh, are we all perpetual? No. You, your invitee will always follow you. Through your entire Gift of Legacy journey, your invitee will always follow you. It doesn't matter on what board you are and it doesn't matter if it's the 10th time that you are on a silver board, then it will be their 10th time that they're joining you on a silver board. They always follow you, they always snap back, even if they go away for, you know, one round somewhere else or one cycle somewhere else, but they will always follow you back. Um, the perpetual and the uh, first cycle system works in collaboration. It's running at the same time. There's not a perpetual board somewhere and then there's a first cycle board somewhere that's not how it functions if that was the case we would not be able to take care of the oldest board uh, if the oldest board happened to be a first cycle board so we need to understand that these boards function in collaboration it is you that that goes into a perpetual state basically because you are now repeating the process and you finished a first cycle on board x y or z and that makes you a perpetual participant rather than being on a perpetual board so i hope this clears up some of the confusion of people thinking that there is a divide between a first cycle and a perpetual system uh, i hope it clears up the fact that you can place your invitees anywhere they will find you again uh, it's not like you're giving them away or anything like that uh, you can build a lineage you can build a team if that's the way you want to do it um, it's important to get your invitees in and it's important for, for the system to function and for you to uh, reap the benefits from it. So um, to everybody holding back, uh, not understanding uh, why they need to get two people but they're giving them to a perpetual system, that's not true. It's simply not true. Uh, they will always follow you through your entire journey. Um, so yeah, go ahead, get your people in and uh, I hope this helps you to discuss some strategies with uh, the people in your in your teams or in your groups. We all have our own little teams and groups and things where we chat. Uh, share it with them, discuss it with them. And um, yeah, best of luck to you on your Gift of Legacy journey.